So my parley was so close to hitting last night, we had it boosted. The amount of men in my DMs asking me to show my feet to them in some sort of photo or video form as some sort of amends, retribution, or reparation for said parlay not working out is truly staggering. And on that note, we turn to the NFL big day. Where does Odell Beckham Jr. go? Uh, we'll talk about that. We've got what a special day in the league. Walter Payton, Man of the Year nominations are out. I had a full cry looking at some of the amazing, truly incredible work that the social media teams are putting out across the league, highlighting good stuff that's happening uh, in those buildings and in the communities. Uh, we've got my Week 13 underreactions on the show, and we are still trying to figure out how Brady pulled off that NFL record 44th career fourth quarter comeback last night. Let's go. Feet gross. Well, first of all, it's impossible not to love, 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 love Devin White. We love him, and it's impossible not to be impressed with what those Bucks did last night, down 13 points. They had three minutes to go, and they put together... It's like a trite, I say it too often with Tom Brady under center, a miraculous comeback for whatever team he's helming at said moment, capped by this, this Rashad White touchdown. Oh, my gosh, three seconds to go, three seconds to go, and every time anybody feels like this team doesn't have it this year, and everybody's like, oh, I'm giving up on the Bucks. I'm throwing the towel, Tom Brady comes up with something like this and reels me and you back in. And, yes, we can try to put some blame on the plate of one Dennis Allen, maybe potentially even the Saints as a whole, and nitpick them apart this morning. But this game was so much more about Tom Brady being a legend and this Bucks offense rising to the occasion than it was about the Saints blowing it. He does this to everyone. And this is exactly why I was so upset that Todd Bowles played for overtime in that game against the Browns last week. I don't care how, but the, like, Hello, think of, you have Tom Brady. I was screaming it from this seat here. I don't care how bad the offense is struggling throughout the game. Tom is a different dude, and that clock is ticking the down, and the game is on the line. He just is. And the Bucks, as we look at things like we like to, they are now a half, a game and a half, a game and a half up on the Falcons uh, in the NFC South at six and six. And they still have pretty clear issues that they got to work out or solve or tweak offensively uh, with the offensive line. And, you know, just their overall lack of rhythm for long stretches in these games that we we're seeing, we're kind of like, huh? Like, what was that first half? You really couldn't, 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 are him and Mike Evans fighting? Like, what's happening with those two? We'll get into that on my Oprah episode later in the week, but come on. Uh, Despite all of that, they're scrappy, they keep clawing, and as long as Tom Brady is in the NFC playoff picture, no one's safe. No one's feeling comfortable. And they've got a big one this week in Santa Clara against the Niners. Ooh, number one ranked defense. Are we going to see Pouty, Pouty Brady getting his block knocked off by Joey, by uh, Nick Bosa three times? Adding to that 14 and a half sack total? We'll see. Uh, hit me up at Up and Adam Show. Okay, I'm just going to be on, like, the feet thing. It's, it's, it's staying with you, isn't it, Marissa? I'm really scared. I said it about five minutes ago, and it's a, I, you know what's the, the, the funny, and the, people are, people you know, Marissa, people I know, people we like are walking around, I have no problem with it, are walking around DMing people about their feet, and like it's nothing. We need to talk to them. I'm a guy, but I'm just saying, like, someone knows, I'm telling you the amount, the volume of incoming DMs I get about feet makes me so sure that we all know someone. There's someone here in our Up and Adams family that is a feet person. <laughs> can, we, can we plan some Brian as a Brian? <laughs> the whole control room is dying. <laughs> Brian? But I didn't say just men. Marissa, it could be you. It's somebody. It's somebody in our... Listen, the numbers are clear. This is a statistical thing. I'm a numbers gal. Maybe we'll ask Sam Munson about it in our PFF weekly segment about guys. And I'm not showing you, like my parlay didn't hit, so I owe you a photo of my feet. Like, I'm, excuse me? But then I think if this doesn't go well, my parlays, parlays keep not working. Like, feetfinder.com might be where I'm working in a year, so I shouldn't be talking trash about any of that. All right. Mm. I, I think we're underreacting to people who are passionate about feet. And we're underreacting to things across the league right now. So let's get into it. Um, the family text chain is insane right now. Uh, okay. We are underreacting 
to the Lions and this run that they're on right now. Yes, the Lions, we're starting our show with it. They've won four of their last five. They're climbing right back into the thick of the NFC playoff race. Let me see this here. Yeah, look, they're two games back of Seattle for the final wild card spot in the NFC. They're playing their best football at the perfect time. The Lions have the third best record in the NFL of the last five. They're fourth offensively, fourth, you guys. And the most shocking out of all of this, they've allowed the sixth fewest points per game in the league over that span. This defense was historically terrible early this year. But you got to give credit to Aaron Glenn, their DC, and they've figured it out completely. But uh, I don't know why I'm telling you even anything. You can just listen to the vocal stylings of their head coach. That was the best game we played all year, Joe. That was the best game. We are playing our best football right now. There's five weeks in a row now we're playing our best football. December. That's a credit to you guys. I know what we are, man. I know what we are. You should know what you are. We talked about the skilled players. You had to own it today, man. You had to rise up. Receivers and DBs. And how about that quarterback? No one talks about Jared Goff. He's been forgotten since that trade. But he deserves some credit. I'm glad Dan Campbell gave it to him there. I love that locker room. He had to watch Matthew Stafford take over his team. Those are his Rams. And he took them and won a Super Bowl last year. That couldn't have felt good. And now he's having a moment in Detroit. You love to see it. Hard not to root for it. Over the last five games, he has the third best record in the league. Hello. He's top ten in passing yards and passer rating. However, this season ends up, you can see him building confidence, gaining with each passing week. And the guys on the team are really rallying around him. It's good to see. This team is building something special. Evan Fox, Foxy over at the McAfee Show, says brand new Lions, not the same old Lions. It's true, and I hope we're screaming it from the rooftops, and I think soon everyone should. Uh, and, if you know, they are different. They feel different. They look different. I was looking at the Fandles Warrants book yesterday. They're uh, favored over the Vikings. I'm sorry? In some big way, it's interesting. Uh, and if you know that, so that being said, if the Lions can find a way to beat the, the Vikings, who are ten and two this weekend, then you start enjoying and welcoming and embracing a playoff possibility. It starts to become less of a pipe dream and more of a reality. And I don't think anyone will be under underacting to these brand new Lions, Evan Foxy. Uh, after that, okay, let's move on here. I think. We are underreacting to the greatness that is Devontae Adams. And if you don't watch Red Zone and you're just watching your team and you're missing this, let me fill you in. Because just like the Lions, the Raiders, they're getting right back into the thick of the race. Take a look. They've won three straight. They're two games back of the Jets for a wild card spot. And they've gotten back into that playoff hunt on the back of their wide receiver. He's, <laughs> he's really feeling himself too, but he's going scorched earth on everyone leading the league in every receiving category, averaging almost 30 yards a game more. 30 yards a game more than the next closest guy, Justin Jefferson. And if these numbers aren't impressive enough, and they are, and they are, consider the fact that he has faced the Broncos' number three ranked pass defense and the Colts' number four ranked pass defense in that span. Those are two stifling pass defenses. And the scariest part is that he really is only getting better and more in sync as weeks go on. And on Sunday against the Chargers, what a game. 177 yards, two touchdowns. Loved this first touchdown. Oh, see ya, see ya, see ya. And you know I love the Chargers. I don't love to see this, but Adams is related to me. So he's making ridiculous catch after ridiculous catch. And what he does to Asante Samuel Jr. here, it's just unfair. What are you supposed to do for Asante Samuel? Nothing. Uh, and it, Christian Watson has a place in our show a little bit later, so stay tuned for that. But it's got to have the Packers feeling a kind of way right now, too, with just how dominant of a player he is. And with the level that Devontae is on, and then you look at the run game, and Josh Jacobs running wild as the NFL's leading rusher. Also, no one talks about that. And Chandler Jones, big acquisition, finally heating up. He had a three-sack game in that win as well. This isn't just a, oh, Vegas? Kind of sure we don't. There's plenty of life in Vegas, and they're taking on the banged up Super Bowl champs? Question mark. How do what the Rams, the shell of the lifeless, soulless Rams that we saw all season long? Injuries, of course, part of that. They have them on Thursday Night Football, Amazon Prime Video. Devonte, uh, <laughs> Devonte and Jalen. We get Devonte and Jalen in front of a national audience. I am ready for that game, and I'm ready for them to be in the playoff picture. All right, we've got Darius Butler on the show. Listen, Darius. 
we got to get an exorcist, uh, someone to sage us. Dar Darius, I'm quitting sports betting. I'm out. Don't See do ya. it. Yep. No, no, no. We're out. We're out. Only one. He is an F1 enthusiast, future member of the Ferrari team, and fellow loser. With me, co-host of the Man to Man podcast, weekly guest here on the McAfee Show, Darius, what up? What's happening, man? It was, a, it was some bad beats last night for both of us. Uh, whatever you got to do, Kay, feet, coffee, Pete. beer, whatever it is you got to do, you got to break Listen, this curse for us. This, this guy on, on, <laughs> in my DMs, I'm not even kidding, this was the, and the, I'll, I'll save you from the expletives, but it's literally like... If you send me a picture of your feet, <laughs> you'll you'll hit your boosts, and I'm like so yeah. I'm like well, at this point like maybe I will have to do that. I'll try that. So you played you played nine years. I'm not worried about anybody trying to see these feet, but um, whatever you got to do for us, take one for the team, Jay. Uh, why were you doing? Uh, my producer told me that you were doing push-ups before you came on. What so what is that about? I mean, you always got to get your get your blood flowing, get your you know have your arms right, yeah. you know for. Do you do that every morning? Yeah, every every morning you should get up, get some planks, get some push-ups, and you gotta do something. You know, stay I, active. Just I Saturday. certainly, Just I Saturday certainly Saturday. don't. I about walk out into my living room, sit and get my makeup done for me, and walk out the door and get in the car. I, maybe I should try that. Marissa, push-ups. Yeah, we'll planks. Do push -ups. Go planks. Go planks, push-ups, pull-ups. Okay, I don't know. No one knows me less than yeah, you. That's, that's what you're you're saying. All right, let's talk about this. <laughs> Demoralizing is the word to use for these parlays of ours. Uh, you said you liked Tough. my parlay on Twitter, and I told you, well, that's the kiss of death on my parlay. What Donovan Smith? Would you? We got something to say to him? That holding? I mean, unbelievable. <laughs> You know what? I, when I when I saw the touchdown, the cannons went off. Like I was so hyped, I didn't even see the flag sign. I was I was getting my phone ready to tweet everybody that's been talking trash. Yes. You know, I think I only hit one, maybe two this year. Uh, <laughs> one, but one, that would have been the second or third. That would have been the second or third. I I was so hyped. I was so beside myself. And then to see the flag, I'm like, oh, I know it's BS. Then I saw the replay. Definitely holding. Not even close. But uh, for that to come back, that hurt. That that was that was that was a stake to the heart right there. It but was I guess holding. I guess it's football. Where, it where was do I go? bad holding. Where do Google. I go from here? Because you're saying you've hit. I, I have not yet hit a par. Like granted, I started like I mean, four or five. But like, where where do I go from here? You, you go to you go to your next one. You know what? Swing for the fences a little more. You know that was that uh, yours is built. It was plus twenty five yeah. as a boost. Yeah. And you had, I mean, it was you had Olave, Godwin, and Evans one twenty five a touchdown. I felt like that was a lot, but swing for the fences a little bit. Maybe maybe a plus six hundred. You only got to hit one. You hit one, and it makes up for all those L's. So who's, just get up, keep getting up to the plate, keep swinging, baby. Who's the Bucks player that caught that? The title author? What is his name? What? Otten? Otten? Is that I should have – so my next time I'll say Otten, 250 plus receiving yards and seven touchdowns, and hopefully I win. Because he's, throwing, he's out there throwing the ball to Otten, Tom Brady. Thank you. Uh, speaking of Tom, we have vintage Tom. Vintage Tom on oh, yeah. the last drive, and everybody knew it. I'm sitting at home on my couch. Like, I, know, I don't know what's about to happen. If you're trying to defend against a Tom Brady in a two-minute drill, no matter what team he's got, is there anything you can even do? I mean, yeah, the Saints. I mean, they have a lot. They have had had a lot of success against him, but they mm -hmm. kept showing him, you know, the same looks. And eventually, obviously, he's going to figure it out. And they weren't playing great at all. The, the Bucks looked terrible until obviously they needed it, and the Saints definitely did um, as much as they could to help him out late as well. But uh, Tom, you know, it's just about his team. That sideline never feels like they're out of it when you have twelve out there as your quarterback. And then defensively, it's kind of like ah, we got to make a stop. And every play you don't make a stop and you don't get off the field, you start getting a little more pressure as a defensive play caller, as a defensive player. And he's been in that situation so much. That's crazy. That's the latest go-ahead touchdown that he's thrown in his career. Crazy. But I think now forty-four. Uh, fourth quarter comebacks now, it's like inevitable at this point. But uh, it, it was wild, wild to see that happen last night. Three seconds left on the clock, and I don't think anyone in the NFC is safe if they uh, remain inside the playoff picture because they'll get hot.
spot and they'll get it going. Now, uh, Tom Brady, a lot of rumors about how he might be going to San Francisco next year. Jimmy G, of course, out for this year with a foot injury. Yep. Are we on the Brock Purdy train? Am I rooting for him? Or do you think that this Baker Mayfield to the Niners thing makes too much sense? Oh, no. I, I mean, I, I root for everybody. You know, and it would be an amazing story. I think uh, he's already the first and only uh, Mr. Irrelevant to throw a touchdown pass. And then he got a win against my Dolphins, unfortunately. But he looked good. He looked good. And uh, obviously that defense is going to keep him in, in great situations where he won't have to go out there and score, you know, 38 points a game. Uh, he looked great, actually, for him to get in there without uh, preparation for a week. But, you know, as defenses and teams get more of a book on Brock Purdy, it's going to be tougher to, for him to be successful. But um, they did a great job acquiring weapons. Christian McCaffrey, obviously, Debo's back healthy. Kittle, Jennings, IU, like just so many weapons. So he's in the best situation you could be in uh, as, as a young quarterback. I don't know. We can't. I can't. We're talking Niners. We can't get away with. And that's. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't answer your question about the Bakerfield. That's a no to Baker Bakerfield. I, I, I would, kind of, It's implied. I, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. It's sorry. Implied. I just wanted, <laughs> just to be sure. It's all good. He, we'll see if he ends up somewhere as a backup, though. Um, we have to talk about the Dolphins, obviously, because they caught an L to said Niners last week. Uh, I, I felt so dumb. I felt like such a like a five year old because I wasn't watching every play, but I turned, I flipped it, or maybe it was red zone, and I saw just you know really early in the game. Maybe I don't know if it was the first play or not. The two, uh, and then it go, you know, it, it goes, and yeah. I, I'm, I'm first I'm, offensive play. MVP. Like I'm, you know, I'm all like <laughs> dolphin emojis, like out my eyes, like insane. And then and then he had some. I mean, that touchdown to Tyreek was really beautiful. And then yeah. there were ups and downs and bad mistakes made. Uh, uh, and, it, you know, the offense wasn't clicking like it had in the last few games. Is there anything actually wrong in your eyes, or are they just taking on the number one D? Uh, you know what? It, it was the number one defense, and obviously, uh, you know, they were banged up at, at offensive tackle, so hopefully we got to get, uh, you know, you got to get Jackson and Armstead back as soon as possible. But the great thing is we're not facing Nick Bosa every week, three sacks, uh, one strip sack. But uh, Tua just looked off, especially mm -hmm. early on. Like the first half, obviously you had the first play in field for that 75-yard touchdown. But after that, he was missing throws that we've seen him hit uh, all year. And he was just high on everything, kind of calmed down late um, and made some plays. But we just got too far behind. And uh, like you said, we're not going to be facing the top defense every year. But I think Tua, you know, he'll pick, he'll pick it up and he'll be right back kind of in that MVP race at this point. But I think right now it's uh, Jalen Hurts. I think he jumped back up to the top yeah. of that leaderboard uh, his performance this Sunday. And Mahomes would have stayed there, but they, of course, lost to the Bengals. Uh, before we get yeah. to Shutdown City, uh, Darius, we got to talk because the absolute, uh -oh. the absolute disrespect that has been given by wide receivers to some corners this week, I, I you know, Roughly. we really need to fix this and take a look. Let's take a look at some tape here. A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown revenge game of his life against his old team, the Titans on Sunday. Two touchdowns, 119 receiving yards. Look at this one touchdown, though. Where did Christian Fulton go? Yeah. I mean, you know, you got usually when wide receivers run this double move and you're in their way, they try to avoid you, they try to run around you. But AJ Brown, aka Swole Batman, just decided, you know, I'm gonna run right through him. And uh, I think Christian, well, I know Christian Fool made it ten times worse just laying there uh, on the ground. <laughs> like you can't do that. Let him catch the touchdown. And AJ Brown's probably looking back like, oh, I hope they don't call offensive pass interference here. But yeah, very. Uh, very disrespectful right there by AJ Brown. But he told him he had to he had to punish his old team. What are you thinking? Whooped him on the goalpost and then told him he still loved him. If you're Fulton and you get bulldozed like that, what are you thinking? I'm thinking let, let me get up as fast as possible, number one. That's that look, players, DBs, linebackers, D I don't care who, who it is. You get stiffed arm, you get ran over, you get shook, whatever it is, get up. Just get out of there as soon as possible. Let them focus on the touchdown and the celebration and all that stuff. They, they won't remember it. They never even talk about the defenders half the time. But don't lay there because now they're going to go back and go to the replay. <laughs> hey, did he hurt something? <laughs> did he roll an ankle? Is it, no, just get up, bro, and figure it out on the sideline. <laughs> DK Metcalf and Jalen Ramsey, that we I love them together. They've had their battles in the past. This time, DK yep. brought that smoke, though. He was very confident, so confident that he waved uh. Jalen to come over and follow him one on one <laughs> later. <laughs> DK caught the game-winning touchdown. What do you make of this? I mean, 
DK knew he wasn't going with them. Now, you know, that's why they that's why they aligned him to the right <laughs> side and motioned him across. But DK uh, Metcalf did catch a big touchdown against uh, Jalen Ramsey uh, late in that game. But that's what you love to see. We'll see Ramsey and um, Devontae Adams, I believe, soon coming. But uh, you love to see those top yeah. dog on top dog matchups. Um, and you like to see that little banter, too. I remember back in the day, I think it was uh, Ocho Cinco telling like a DB to come line up and press him in his face. So you definitely love to see that trash talk, especially the trash talk that everyone at home can see uh, as well. And you, that's never happened to you, though? No, no receivers ever told you to come um, Probably, I'm sure. You know, receivers <laughs> have this, you know, you, a lot of receivers do that. And he, he did go over there running around and actually yeah. catch the ball. A lot of receivers do that when they're not even getting the ball. They talk trash. I mean, that was cute, DK. That was cute, I guess. But he, <laughs> yeah, he showed up. He made the touchdown he and did. he got the win. So, you know, I 14 loved it. showed up. I loved it for him. I'm all, I'm still all about the Seahawks. I'm so for it. And I'm so for Bobby Wagner had his revenge Gino, game man, yeah. as well. It was a thing of beauty to see. Uh, and, yes, it is Jalen and Devontae Adams tomorrow night on Thursday Ooh. night football. So that will be a thing of beauty, of course. I don't think uh, Devontae Adams is getting enough love. Um, okay, and then there's this. Balling right now. Mm -hmm. Jamar Chase. Uh, Justin Ooh. Reed, <laughs> Legarius Sneed after a T. Higgins had touchdown. I mean, it wasn't even Jamar's touchdown, and he's doing See, uh, you, uh, you know, if your dog get you on, know, he scores, that's just as good as you score. You're a unit out there as a DB group and as a wide receiver group. Now, I got a little beef with Justin Reed here because – you 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 giving all these receivers this great wide receiver for all this bullet to board yeah. material. You getting them all gassed up, and as a safety, you're not gonna be guarding these dudes. The corners are. They got to deal with that uh, that heat out there in the field. So Jabari Chase obviously came in fired up. You know he he's been banged up for the last few weeks. T Higgins has kind of been carrying that wide receiver one low, and he showed up, made plays. Joe Burrow, you've been talking about these Bengals all year. Three and zero against the Chiefs now. Hey, that's they might hey. Scary squad right now. Scary squad. But yeah, I got beef with Justin Reed here. So do I. Love him as a player. I love him as a player. But don't hey, don't get if that's your matchup, yeah, you do all the talking you want, but you're gonna be over there guarding Hayden well, Hurst. So, don't yeah. get Jamar Chase fired up for so us. He was, he was he was trying to say Hayden Hurst who wears 88, of course, that he's more of a finesse guy, whatever. Hayden Hurst leaves the game and is hurt. And this is where my like my thing is it happened, whatever. I was more mad at Jamar Chase. Like, don't use your bulletin <laughs> board fuel against yourself and get a taunting <laughs> penalty in the second. What are you doing? But then, coach was upset about that. Yes, yeah, so he's very. I, you know what? I'm happy to see him have a shot of life in him. That coach on the sideline. Listen to me. This morning, Justin Reed doubles down and tweets this: "Unpopular oh, opinion. No. We lost, but I was still right. Cry about it. What is he right about? What is he saying?" I mean, Andy Reed said that Justin Reed, he's new to the team, and he still doesn't necessarily understand how they do things around it. And I, we haven't really seen this from. Chiefs players like this is not mm -hmm. really how they how they operate. So uh, I, I'm never a fan of. Uh, I used to have a coach who was Belichick, who would say, "Hey, you know, speak a little when you win, but speak even less when you lose." So I think this is one of those situations right here. Obviously, we're in a different point in time with social media, but nah, not a fan of the tweet, especially <laughs> after a loss. Dude. But uh, once again, Dude. fan of the Chiefs, definitely a fan of Reed too. Seriously, you go, I had a coach once, Belichick. Like, it was if I would never hear of him. I, I, I've, had a, I've had a lot of coaches, but, I, you know, he's obviously at the top of that list. Okay, so corners had a bad beat this week. That's what it is. They need a little pick-me-up after a weekend full of disrespect. So let's give them let's give them some advice. Can you give me a how, – how would you – if you're Jalen, how are you handling Adams, who doesn't really talk Ooh. that much? But Adams has swat – he's really feeling himself, you can tell, right now. But what are you going to say to the, the safeties, like the reeds, and then the corners? and having to deal with some of these wide receivers. You, you know, I, I'm not much of a pep talk guy, you know, okay? We know these matchups, especially Jalen. Jalen knows what he's getting into with Devontae. They've had some great matchups already. And Jalen's not having a great year this year. Mm. Obviously a great player. Devontae Adams, he is. He started off slow, went through a little uh, a little phase there where, hey, is Derek Carr throwing the ball? But ever since that Derek Carr cry press conference. I believe the Raiders are undefeated right now. Devontae's got his best friends back, so he's going to come in fired up. I'm excited to watch this one. Uh, you know, Jalen is an all-time competitor, and so is Devontae, so whenever, once again, you see big on big, um, I'm going to be tuning in for this matchup. But DBs across the league, man, we, it's got to be our week, man. Passing game has been yes. down all year. Let's step it back up, make some big-time plays, and hopefully get yourself in the Shutdown City next week. That said, let's take it to the streets of Shutdown City. What do you got? Ooh, let's do it. Let's take it to the street. So, 
a, a, a recurring member, recurring member resident of Shutdown Series, Tariq Woolen. I saw Woo! you tweet about him all Sunday. Big time player, obviously big, fast, coming to the league as a rookie player at an all pro level. Got another pick, leads the league in interceptions this year with six as a rookie. Next, now let's talk about disrespectful. This disrespectful beat down to my coach, Deron Bland. <laughs> two interceptions. I thought the TV was on rewind when I was watching this. Two interceptions off of Matty Ice. Um, and this primetime uh, beatdown got us flexed out of our next primetime games. Thanks, Deron. So he, I think this is his first time <laughs> in Shutdown City. So welcome to Six for Shutdown City, baby. And his teammate, when you put up 54, I don't know how many oh my fantasy points this defense scored, but Malik Hooker once again had his revenge 20. game, a former first-round pick of the Indianapolis Colts. He had a fumble recovery for a touchdown, had an interception that he almost ran back for a touchdown. Just overall, great game. And that's my young guy, too. That's my guy. I got drafted as a rookie when I was in the Colts to replace me. So oh, I'm glad he's doing a great nice. job and balling out there in Dallas, man. So shout out to Malik, Malik Hooker, who is the mayor this week of Shutdown City. Malik Hooker is the mayor. We gave him love on Monday for that. Uh, you were in a mood today, Butler. Too much coffee? <laughs> I got my juice. You know, I, I, I didn't know I was coming on today. I had some I other stuff going, and I wound up. Mm. I like it when you're you're insane right now. I'm gonna okay. Next time you come on next week, I will do push-ups. Bet, that's a bet. I think I can do. We gotta two. stick to it. That's a bet. FanDuel Sportsbook. Bet the under on two push-ups. Hey, you you start with two. Just next week, four, six. It's all about progress. Just keep making those steps. That's, That's all right. It's about. Church of Darius Butler. We love you. You can catch him on the Pat McAfee Show and the Man to Man podcast. And we will see him uh, on Up and Adams next week, not doing pep talk. So he's not much of a pep talk guy. We've got more to come here on the show. Mark Ingram usually joins us. He played last night, unfortunate loss and injury. So uh, sending him all the best this morning. Maybe he's watching and we will get into some other storylines. Oh, well, yeah. Could you throw it to Evans, Tom? Three in a row. Let's keep the ball moving. Let's get it. <laughs> Anytime you get to 10 wins in this league, you give it up for yourself. Got a long way to go here, and we still got everything in front of us. This win is fun. Let's keep this thing going. What do we say, Dolph? They gotta play us! Keep the most important thing the most important thing. Bikes on three, one, two, three, bikes! They gotta play us! Love that. Time to hit the lights where we highlight an unheralded player. Not really unheralded, but just somebody that deserves some love. We put him under the bright lights. And, uh, yeah, let's do it here. And we've got Christian Watson, guys. Amazing, brilliant. Again on Sunday in Chicago, he sparked the Packers to break out of a 16-3 hole. And it started with this play. Incredible grab. Let's take a look. In the end zone. Oh, my gosh. Here's Aaron in Chicago. He owns it, and he does with his rookie. Wow. That's the end of the first half. It brought the Packers back to within one score, and it ended with a uh, brilliant, I should say, 46-yard run on an end around to drive one final wooden stick through this Bears fan's heart. So uh, it's been incredible over the last four weeks. If you look at this, Christian Watson leads the entire league with eight total touchdowns, okay? Yeah, even more than Devontae Adams, and Devontae Adams has been on an absolute tear. So it's not just about what Watson's doing, it's you know about where he came from, too. He missed all of training camp, let's not forget, due to injuries, and he had some rather nightmarish starts uh, to the season with drops and things that people like to keep playing. Um, and there were some bad moments to start, but it finally has happened, LaFleur, you know, ran through it after the game and he was beaming about his receiver's ability to fight through adversity. So take a listen to this. To go out week one, you get an opportunity on the first play from scrimmage and makes a great move and and is a sh sure touchdown and he drops the ball. And then you think back to the Dallas game, you know, the first two passes of the game, he drops. It's just, it's so cool to see guys respond in these moments. And we, the, the play where he scored his first touchdown, you could just see it click and the bright lights and the stars and the, oh, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to be. And Aaron Rodgers is helping him do that. We gave a lot of love to Devontae Adams earlier in the show, but I love seeing this for Watson. And yes, it might be too late to save the Packers season, uh, but, you know, it, it might be good enough to see that they have an emerging star. Uh, and that might be enough, rather, to convince a guy like Aaron Rodgers that, hey, maybe it's worth sticking around in Green Bay just a little bit 
longer. We've got more uh, up and atoms on the way. Uh, yeah, we're gonna break out the coupon books because I owe you guys. Back on Up and Adam's show, Matthew Hamilton is with us. Uh, Hamilton, you were being really uh, conniving, I would say, really kind of mean to me on this show today. And I want you to know that Marissa, Marissa said that she's done your birth chart and you are- and, Oh God. And she's, she's ready to shred you. I, I, I let her and Taylor wrote me into, I don't know how they got this out of me. I gave them my birth time and day and all that. And they're working some type of witchcraft. You I idiot. don't know what's happening. Can I you work know. the same witchcraft to fix me so I'm not looking here at the papers? <laughs> all right, we got three minutes left in the show. We're looking through some some deal. Oh, Aldi? Anybody shop at Aldi? Oh my gosh, I, they, they don't give they didn't give you plastic bags. So I would take they, you would like have to find boxes to put your groceries in, and me and my brother would take them and we'd make forts at home. But they had all these. Nobody ever did that. If you shopped at Aldi and made forts out of the boxes that you stole or took from there. Let me know. All right, we've got, you know, multicolored peppers for sale for two forty nine. That sounds good. This is why we do this, because I know that everybody spent a couple bucks on my parlay last night. It didn't hit, and we want to hook you guys up. So we found some deals to try to help you make up for that loss. Here we go. Uh, listen, watching the game play out, I'm sure there were a lot of feelings uh, running through your body. I think we can help with that, Hamilton. You can head over to CVS. CVS always has great deals, by the way. Maybe they should sponsor always. our show. Uh, nausea, heartburn. Indigestion, everybody knows, upset stomach, diarrhea. I mean, Marissa's doing the dance here in the studio. It is uh, relief with Pepto Bismol, a twin pack, a twin pack. One from Darius Butler, one from me, just $14.79. And you buy one, you get one 50% off. So that's four bottles. Um, I think that'll that'll about cover it. Uh, I, I probably needed an entire one after that Godwin touchdown guy called that. Okay, so. can I just say something? The whole bit is supposed to be me cutting coupons. Do, do ads not have coupons anymore? There's no more coupons? Are coupons not a thing anymore? First the VCR, now coupons? I still get those CVS coupons. What the heck am I supposed to? I'm just supposed to cut. Oh, Lay's. I need those. We all know. I ate a whole thing of Lay's yesterday, $1.99 at Super go. King. Uh, it's the holiday season. Now, just because you listen to me, you, your pets shouldn't have to suffer. That's really the, the headline here. <laughs> get them the warmth they truly deserve. Target has dog and cat hoodies for 30% off. They're only $7. Let it snow hoodies for your dog. Um, if I tried to get one of those for Nala and put it on her, I'd probably be scratched to death. Um, oh, well, then I think I'm going to yeah. send one your way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I know, appreciate it. I know we have 30 seconds. I know you want to join the neighborhood and decorate your front lawn this winter. Here's a deal that should help. Uh, go to Lowe's and for $20.68, $20.68, you can have this four foot tall inflatable gingerbread man. Uh, it even has an energy efficient <laughs> LED light. Front lawn, that's going right in the middle of my living room. I'm all in. Does it? There's just no coupons anymore. I wanted to do a bit with coupons. Uh, they're all digital. Everything's digital. You know But not this. everything's digital because then they wouldn't print these inserts. Why are we even, what are we even? That's a good point. Uh, remember like those little coupon folders that all of our parents used to cite in the this and that and here's the canned goods and whatever? Conrad is not happy with today's no. show. You know what? I had a good time. So we'll see you guys tomorrow on Up and Adams. Uh, <laughs> Taylor Luan, Thursday? Yep. Ryan Shizu Thursday. On the show tomorrow. We'll see you guys. Bye.